So this is the system. Like this is the system that I run through almost everything we do is what's the one to three skill sets? What is the one skill set that if I mastered it would make all the difference in the world? And then the... Welcome to the Ed O'Keefe Show. Transform your mind, accelerate your business, energize your body, and inspire the world. Now here is your host, Ed O'Keefe. Hey, it's Ed O'Keefe, and uh, I hope you are enjoying uh, your summer. At least that's what <laughs> it is here in Chicago at 10 a.m. I'm just on my back porch, uh, about to start working, and needed to record a few of the Ed O'Keefe Show intros. And this one is a fun one because this is uh, another one from behind the scenes of my Time Collapsing Academy event. Um, what I love about this little clip that you're going to, uh, it's about 20 minutes long, you're going to get um, uh, on this podcast is that it um, really is the structure of modeling in order to create time collapsing but it's modeling in the idea that it's your own time collapsing system first. And then we look at how do uh, we apply this elsewhere. And something I do here that I don't think I've really done in other locations is go through the traps of modeling, like where modeling can lead you in the wrong direction. Um, and one one thing that we do or I do a lot when I'm looking at how do we create speed for somebody else like how do we speed up your success is definitely feeling uh, well you know what uh, well it's definitely a sense of like how do you create alignment so that every day you're moving with as least amount of friction as possible and being in total alignment with your superpower. And so this little clip here will walk you through some things. Now, uh, one quick little warning. You could jump ahead if you need to. Uh, but the first four minutes is kind of not relevant to modeling. However, um, it's a offside off conversation that started regarding um, a little bit about permission. And then the people talking are all um, world-class level uh, individuals. One's uh, on the U.S. national team. Uh, one uh, is a former uh, professional fighting coach who works with celebrities, who runs a hospital now, a true entrepreneur. And then the other one is uh, Vinny Fisher, who's talking about the um, behind the scenes of being an entrepreneur, like in how getting home after, well, you'll you'll hear it. But just hang in there for a few minutes because you might be like, what is there? What are they talking about? But what they share is so priceless uh, to avoiding the undertow of success is, is one of the terms I use a lot. So um, that's it. This is Ed O'Keefe. And again, we are running our first ever mega conference, uh, Time Collapsing Academy in Nashville in October. Um, and I'd love for you to be there if you want to meet a lot of the experts I've had on my show, plus even more. Um, I'd love to have you there. Just check it out at timecollapsing.com. Um, and uh, we also have the, the, the book Time Collapsing coming out in the next 10 days. So it should be out by the time you get this uh, podcast. And uh, we'd love your support. Uh, we're doing a free plus shipping offer where you can actually get the book absolutely free um, uh, if you pay shipping and handling. So uh, that's it. Uh, have an amazing day, and I hope you enjoy this. All right, thanks, bye. This is the friction point, right? We have to get past it. Now, here's the coolest thing that I want you to, to look at, right? Is that if we, someone asked me on the break, hey, do you still look for permission? Or once I, I, I make a decision, do you still look for permission? No, you know why? Because your customers give it to you. Like once you launch, or you decide to go, like Katie, let me ask a question. Your teammates, who you are competing with, how much permission are they now giving you to be, continue to be awesome? None, zero. Ed Clay, when, when you work with pro fighters and pro athletes, how easy is their life? Pretty easy. What's that? It seems pretty easy. Seems pretty easy? If I'm training, I'll make it as easy as possible for them. All they got to do is show up and train. Yeah, all they got to do is show up and train. Okay. How, uh, but let's say like these guys go three, five, six, seven, nine years. 
Oh, it's just super hard. I mean, it's, just, it's hard on the body. Mm. Absolutely. And, and mind, just and the mentally, mental grind. Yeah. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, to become that you know, focused on stuff. How is it with the art? He, Ed, some of you guys don't know about Ed. Ed traveled with um, and has trained some of like the professional like music country artists and stuff like that. How hard is it on them mentally, just out of curiosity? It's super hard because a lot of them <clears throat> rely on alcohol before they get on stage yep. to numb the, the stage fright. And uh, it's a grind that most people don't know. And you're on the road constantly. So, I mean, if you're, if you're on the road from Wednesday to every Sunday, you get two, two days back at home. Yep. And you're back at home and then all of a sudden, bam, you're on the road again. And you do that, you know, uh, all year round. Um, it's, it's, it's really rough. We were talking about it, and um, it led to her. We hired a private detective and all that. But I remember having a conversation with him when, when I was practicing law, and I asked him, um, "Why do he do it?" I just had to know. I'm that guy, right? I'm the guy who goes and counsels someone in prison. I have to know why, right? It's the first question you're not supposed to ask. I just wanted to know. And um, he said something really interesting to me that you just struck a nerve with. He said, "When I'm in front of 65,000 people." and they're all cheering my name. And I go home, and my wife's like, here's a vacuum, change some diapers. Ah, yeah, totally. I had a disconnect, totally. and I had a short circuit in my brain. I suspect that's some of the stuff that happens when they're coming back home to life, and they gotta pay a bill, run to the post office, do this stuff. It's not the same start and they're getting on the road, right? Yeah. Hard to decompress that. Hey, right? hey, what's really important on that, and I'm glad we're filming this, is because I think that's where like people ask me about Kokoro Camp and like what it was training with the SEALs and being 51 hours in, and what was the chaos like? <clears throat> chaos was freaking easy because I was so used to being in my kitchen <laughs> with seven kids and like this stuff. And the fact that like I change more diapers in a day than most people do like their whole life, you know, like, <laughs> but but like like seriously, like at, at midnight when your kid wakes up or 1:30 in the morning when your kid wakes up and you got to go like change the diaper, get do what you got to do, you know, you, do you make a perceptual shift in your head of like, cool, I got this, this is easy, not a problem, I like this, I'm good, or even as entrepreneurs, are you like, well, pff, I'm above this, I can hire someone to do this, like I mean, like where's that mental shift? I think. I think it happens, like, I remember my first big, like, takeoff, I thought I was above everything, man. I was like, oh, my God, we're kicking ass, we're making ass, people are telling me how great I was. Like, I had to go through a little bit of that, like, like, like shrink your head back down um, because it's just, it's just not real. It's all fake stuff. And I think most athletes, and uh, you see it with celebrities, I think you see it with a lot of these, even the young guys, are just skyrocketing. The world is designed to to blow that up for you. Like it's not designed for like people are waiting. Like Conor McGregor loses one fight and the whole world just jumps in, like like it's saying how he's a punk and whatever. Like it's just designed for you. Like there's a certain population who like that undertow effect, which I haven't talked about yet. Um, so what I want to do right now is go over something. How many of you watch the videos on modeling that I posted into the? into the uh, thing. Great, I'm glad it's three. Good job, guys. <laughs> Got a lot of high achievers here. So the concept of leapfrogging starts with an idea that you have a model, like number one, model, OK? Now, the, the whole idea of this is that if one person can do it, I can replicate it. That's the, that's the underlying belief system of it. Uh, Jerry, you replicate everybody's traffic on and steals it um, very kindly. Is kind of, you know, permanently borrowed. I like that. <laughs> the lawyer in the room. Yes. Yeah. So, so, so modeling, we have like things like where, you know, you can reverse engineer business models and stuff like that. But one thing I think is overlooked, and especially like with these videos, and I told, told a couple of guys at break, like next, next time I run this, I'm going to have transcripts of all those things. Because modeling is is not just like physically what you model. I think that's the easiest way to model people. Um, but mentally, like what is their operating belief system, value structure, and identity that allows them to behave a certain way, right? Kim, we've talked on our interview, like six to eight weeks is when you start seeing the radical transformation kick in at like a identity level. Like now if I, if I identify with myself differently, 
I now behave totally different because the world's important things that have changed, right? Make sense? Darren, you probably see the same thing. Six to eight weeks, right? Yeah, that's why like whenever people come into CrossFit, I'm always like, hey, I just do one favor for me. And I, I don't, I don't, they don't pay me even though they should. Um, I'm like, stay six weeks. Well, I signed up for the next 30 days. No, 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 just trust me. Like, get to six weeks and you'll never, you'll never look back. It doesn't matter, like, you don't have to stay in this. You just, you're, just, you're gonna be a different person because your, your neurology is gonna require a different behavior moving forward, right? And so, so we look at models, right? And one thing I think we're kind of in this like weird phase, I'll just speak from my own perception, is that with Facebook, the more you're on Facebook or on stuff, you're seeing all these uh, YouTube or uh, Facebook video ads and whatever of like the next, hey, how to be a high ticket coach and how to be this. And what they really should say is how I change, <laughs> how I change from being a sales rep to um, just charging a lot to be on the phone with people, right? And how I charge a lot differently. Because that's what most high ticket coaches are. You know, they just get on the phone with people. They just charge like 70,000 rather than get commissions. So everybody's that now. So you mentally now go like, well, God, if that guy's doing it, and what we have to like guard ourselves is, is that we just project ourselves into that and want to take action on that. So what I like to do in the next seven to 10 minutes is walk you through a couple of things that I laid out, right? And I already shared with you how uh, when I was an athlete, I had the one identity shift. And I, the structure behind it was, Uh, step one, I was in a competitive environment. Two, external source or person gives me his perception of me. All right? It was a higher, greater perception than I had of myself. Step three, I had external validation because the tournament named me first team. Step four, I adopted it and internalized it, all right? Step five, I behaved and saw myself differently. I, actually, I saw myself differently, so my behavior changed. That's some of the structure of what went on. Okay, I put myself in an environment. Some, some outside source came up to me that I gave credibility to. I got it validated. Uh, I adopted it, and then I went and my behavior changed because I, my identity shifted. Okay? That's structure. Does that make sense on why that's structure? It's not the content, right? So now the next thing that happened is there... Um, is like with Dennis Profits, to give you a little bit, I'm going to lay out five or seven steps here, but uh, skill set acquisition was on the front side of this, by the way, because this will come up again. Okay. So Dennis Profits was on the flip side was, oh, I had this big awareness. Big awareness was I was in the wrong business, right? I need to be in something else. What might that be? Curiosity questions. Like, wouldn't it be better if I was making a thousand bucks or a hundred thousand bucks a month instead of, you know, whatever I was doing at the time, right? $39 eBooks. That was the awareness moment, right? It was on the front side of it. People undermine this awareness component. You guys got to be studying. I mean, one of the exercises I'm going to put in there, I promise you, I'll get this in the next 10 days. Hold me accountable to it. I'm going to find 21 interviews, and then each day, like of billionaires, decamillionaires, like listen to one micro interview a day and just let it infuse in your brain because they all come at this like, well, you know, one day I was just, and then bam, something happened. Okay? So Dennis Profits was step one. I was aware that my life needed to change. And this business, I need to change the business. Number two, I got a model, okay? Actually, one point B was what? I offered to, with those guys, I offered to what? Work for free. Work for free. What'd they say? No, 
Great, here's your other option. So I found a model, okay? Step three, acquired credibility or asset, okay? What did I need to learn how to do in this space? So I started looking at acquire credibility. It's when I license the product, right, or license the stuff. So if you go back to my mental toughness business, I, one thing I realized was that during that is that copywriting was gonna be the gateway. I had heard someone say like, well, if you start, uh, the, your income is in direct correlation to your ability to write sales copy, right? And I always say like, there's a disclaimer here. Since that time, you can become really, really good at other stuff and, and, and like, so I don't want people like watching this going, oh, I'm gonna become a copywriter now. Slow down, there's a bigger picture. But at that time, when I, you know, this goes back, I was 24, 25, maybe 25-ish, I'm 40 now, 15 years ago, it's a pretty good, great skill set to have. I mean, you could always you could still make money. I mean, you write sales copy, learn how to sell. But when I went into Dennis Profits, we were running space ads, like trade magazine ads, generating leads, and then following up with a 40-page direct mail sales letter. No kidding, man, right? And so I acquired the credibility. I had to work on this skill set system. So I don't know if I want to call it that, but let's just call it. I had a model, required it something. Uh, I'll call, I'm going to call this skill set acquisition and grind. So I identified my, um, I'm going to move this down here. That's three. I identified my top three, one to three skill sets. Okay. So this is the system. Like this is the system that I'll run through almost everything we do is what's the one to three skill sets? What is the one skill set that if I mastered it would make all the difference in the world? And then the, the, to parlay that, at this time in my life, copywriting excited me. Randy was one of the first to tell me like, oh man, you really get excited about this marketing stuff, blah, 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 blah. I'm at a stage in my life now where, you know, 15 years later, I really don't want to sit down and write copy for the next five days. Like, that board, that's just not where I'm at, right? Even though if you read that health intensive supplement sales letter, it's badass. It's 80 pages long. <laughs> it's so good, dude. It's just filled with good stuff. Um, identify one thing, skill set acquisition and grind. So, for me personally, this is me personally, when I decide, hey, this is what we're going to do, and I'm going in, then it's blinders are on, the world gets pushed away, and this is what we're doing. Grind. grind. I put grind up there. I know a lot of people don't like to feel that working hard is actually part of time collapsing, but uh, it's just stupidity that would think that it's not. Right? You gotta grind it out. Like that's, you know. You can watch a video on how to how to take somebody down, right? But the one guy who does it a thousand times is more likely to take your ass down than you. <laughs> Didn't like Lloyd win like the judo like national championship with like one or two moves? Yeah. Something like that? Yeah. Okay. So skill set extra and grind. Now here, here's how I approach this, right? So I was like, so what the crazy thing was is like when they sold me the license, they're like, okay, you do this like work at home stuff like that. You just do direct mail, they come in. And I was like, oh cool. So in the fax machine, we started getting three, five, six, seven sales a day. And these sales would be anywhere between like 250 bucks in installments to, you know, pay in full for 9.97. So I went from like pretty much zero to making, you know, literally like, um, you know, three to four thousand bucks a day. Like, you know, like the ad said I would. Um, the problem was the course kind of sucked, and I didn't really know that because I thought it was awesome. And B, there's a lot of people that want to talk on the phone. So then my mentors at the time were like, well, you gotta get phone salespeople. I'm like, I don't want phone salespeople. I'm mean, gonna like, talk to these freaking people. I don't want to talk to these people. I <laughs> thought this is like do mail order business. You just get checks and you make money. You're rich. You go like and get on a boat and you know, whatever. Uh, anyhow, so we had to learn how to do the next process, which was like, okay, cool. We gotta get figure out a salesperson. I gotta fill out an ops. So these were all just like now scaling parts of it. <laughs> And then for like speaking in front of people, I never knew how to sell on stage. And all of a sudden, I had opportunities to go sell on stage in the dental profession. So what I did is I would um, listen to audio tapes of guys who could close rooms. And I remember in my car, I would play their sales pitch, and then I would pause it, 
and then I would sit in my car and I would try and regurgitate word by word, verbatim, not hypothetically, not sort of like, verbatim what they had said. I'd rewind it until I got that 30 seconds, then I'd go the next 30 seconds, got it. And then I'd be able to do it so I, I could actually would be able to do the whole presentation from stage. And uh, you know, I could probably do it right now if I wanted to, but that was my skill set acquisition grind. So like the speaking on stage thing, like selling on stage, like no one likes to like go sell on stage until you know how to sell on stage. Well, how are you gonna know you're gonna sell on stage? Well, you gotta have a little bit of that gap of throwing your crotch at it, right? How to be a badass, right, Kitty? So, um, so this was the skill set acquisition grind, right? And then other models started popping up, right? So around this time, like Dan Sullivan's strategic coach started coming up. Joe Polish launched his Genius, Genius Network. So. In the dental world, we started like uh, our first dental group coaching, very, you know, dental group, just group coaching, I'll put, before anyone was doing it. You know, I think Tom Morant was doing it, whatever, but more models popped up. So I evolved into these other models, right? And then after a certain period of time, I sold off, I'll just give you the exit, I sold off one department. We I actually know. We put, we added new profit centers, add profit centers. And then we ended up selling one of those off, and then I let the business run down as I transitioned to the health supplement business. Okay? Now, health supplement business, my initial goal was, well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, totally flush down the toilet the disaster story, because it's, it's on video and whatever, it's on, you could watch that. This is more about moving forward. Number one was, I decided to go to direct mail, uh, because it was an old long-term market and my strategy there, so I chose my market, chose my con consultant, she went out and got the credibility, so she went out and got the doctor, got the doctor, the, the copywriter, and they came to me with like, on all the market research behind the supplements, they came to me with like, Here's all these high quality products. The doctor was one of the leading doctors in longevity. And they gave me like a, a market analysis of like, this is what it looks like. This is why we would choose these ingredients. This is the research behind them. Go, right? So I didn't have to do any of that, right? So then we, you know, we launched in there. We did some testing, which let's just say it's the same thing as like, um, uh, I didn't even put that over there. And then we scaled the direct mail. Well, guess what? I was cash poor. We evolved into internet, and then, you know, we grew the business, right? So my structure that, if I step back and I kind of look at this, uh, where's there's comparables? Number one, competitive environment. Competitive environment, when we looked at the model. Like that is a, that is a, that is, that was a total comparable that everything I've ever done, I've gone into competitive environments. You know, or where I've had breakthroughs. I could probably list out eight things that I tried to do the easy route or where no one's at, and there's nothing there. Like, I, those all, like, failed. Uh, credibility's in here, right? External source person, external source person. Credibility. Credibility, external model. Identify one to three skill sets. I, I, this is never anything, right? That's my system. That's kind of what's worked for me. So what I want you to do now is let's go through this together, right? Because see, the thing is, is that's Ed's system. That's not your system. There's probably elements of that system that work for you. But the one thing that's very important here is when you identify the one to three skill sets, the one question you gotta ask yourself is, how does my superpower or thing I'm awesome with align with this skill set that, that needs to penetrate past the, hundred, uh, the, the invisible friction line? Okay, so there's certain things, because like Jerry and I have been going back and forth, there's certain things he is brilliant at that my superpower and my personality, just, I can't do it. Like, it's one of those things that it's just like, it is so much arduous, like, I suck at that dude. How do you do that? But it's so easy for him. It's light for him, right? Exactly, yeah. And so the, the problem with modeling is that guys don't, here's my model, here's my, 
thing. Here's my identify my one to three skill sets. It looks like a good business. Does it align with my superpower? That's, that's the secret. Because if it's arduous, it's frustrating, if it's overwhelming to the point where you don't like it, it's probably not in alignment with what your superpower is. So you either got to go acquire it, outsource it, sell it, whatever you got to do, get somebody else to do it. I'm a marketing guy. I could probably figure out some decent PR, right? Decent. If, if I went all in, applied that system, we could do it. Isn't it so much easier to have someone else who's already a pro at it, who likes it, who lights it up, do it for you? This episode is sponsored by Marine D3. If you want 24-hour antioxidant protection while giving your brain, eyes, heart, and overall energy a jolt of long-lasting nourishment, then Marine D3 is for you. This is my number one top-selling health product that I've sold over 500,000 bottles, and right now, 80% of our sales come from repeat customers. Marine D3 can flood your cells with an abundance of new antioxidants and nutrients that fights and repairs damage done to the cells during exercise, everyday living, and the natural breakdown that occurs as we age. After 15 years of research and over $39 million spent on clinical studies, a renowned biochemist has found one of the world's greatest antioxidants. It's called CNLP hiding deep below the ocean surface. I took CNLP, combined it with a little-known omega-3 called calam calamarine, as well as vitamin D3, so that you can get maximum benefit all in one supplement. I'd like to give you the first bottle absolutely free. I just ask that you pay shipping and handling. At edokeefshow.com forward slash free bottle, I'll have a mini presentation that will share more about the supplement and why people are raving about it. Most importantly, it'll show you exactly how you can get it shipped out to you today, just for shipping and handling. This episode is brought to you by Dormant Forces Insider. If you would like monthly big business breakthroughs, insider marketing strategies that actually work, and mindset secrets of multimillionaires sent directly to your door so you can have it in your hands and you can apply them, then this is for you. Now you can test drive my Dormant Forces Insider Silver Membership for just one month free. If you love it, we know you'll stay with it and let it keep you in the loop of what's working inside my businesses and the other dozens and dozens of businesses that I mentor. Why would you go at it all on your own when you can use other people's experience than just replicate what works? Anyhow, right now you can test drive the membership for just $1 plus a few bucks shipping and handling by going to edokeefshow.com forward slash dormant forces. That's edokeefshow.com forward slash dormant forces. And thank you so much for tuning into this episode of the podcast. You can find the show notes for this episode as well as all the other podcast episodes by heading on over to edokeefshow.com. If you would, please go subscribe to the podcast on iTunes and leave a rating and review. Rating and reviews truly are the best way for you to show your appreciation for the show because they help more people find out about the podcast and decide if this is the one for them. So until next week, it's time for you to go out there, take action, and inspire the world.